Hey guys, it's Ashley and welcome to a bit of a different video for you all. So unless you follow me on Twitter, you're probably very confused right now as to why I'm doing this. So let me preface this video before I get started. Two things prompted me to make this video as a series that I'll hopefully continue. Number one is that I am taking a script writing class this semester between January and the end of April, so it's almost over. And at this point, I think I know enough about script writing to be able to do this at least mediocrely. And the second reason is that I was recently online and I was looking at Illuminae because I had remembered that they were making an adaptation of it, so I started googling it and then remembered that Brad Pitt and his whatever company are just doing something with it. I don't know what's happening. That was back in 2015 though, and we haven't heard anything since. Like it has an IMDb page, but that's about it. That got me started on it, but the thing that really made me want to make this video is that I was on so many websites and they were giving such a crappy description of illuminate and of the series. One website that I read said that Katie just so happened to be a hacker and Ezra just so happened to be a fighter pilot and I'm like no. And then there was another one that really really made me mad. They said that their planet was attacked by an alien invasion and I said no. So of course if the big honcho production companies can't get it right I know someone who can. So that is what I am going to be doing. I'm going to be taking my mediocre script writing skills and adapting my own version of Illuminae into a screenplay. So I'm 100% prepared for this to be mediocre crap, so I'm not planning to do anything with it in the future. It's literally just to show myself that A, I could do it, and B, why is it taking everybody else so long to do it if I can make a series out of it as I'm doing it? So this is really just to hold me over until we hear anything else about the news of the, the adaptation. <laughs> because why not? It's not like I have a million other things I need to be doing, right? If you have not read Illuminae yet, this entire video is gonna be spoiling you because I'm gonna go through exactly what happens in the book and translate it into a script. So yeah, if you wanna keep watching and you haven't read the book, you're more than welcome to, but it's just a fair warning. So the one thing that I am the most worried about when transcribing this book to screen is probably going to be the fact that this is told obviously through emails and through instant messages and things like that. It's not a normal narrative, which means that I'm going to have to improvise basically what everything looks like and it, it's gonna be fun. We're just gonna dive in and see what happens. So I'm gonna try my best in post-production to make half of the screen me and half of the screen my screen that I'm seeing that I'm typing on. So um, hopefully this will work. If not, I'll just have to redo this whole thing with something that will work. It'll be fine. Okay, so the program that I'm using is the one that I used for my script writing class. It's called Writer Duet. It's right here. This is the free version. My mediocre script writing skills always tell me that I'm supposed to fade in, which I mean, I don't have to, but that's just what I was taught. So we're just gonna go with it from there. This is not gonna end well, you guys. This is not gonna end well. Okay, so the first page is basically the note that the Illuminate group is sending to Frobisher. Should we start off with the interviews? Or should we start off with, like, cause this kind of kicks it off. I don't know what is gonna play in the background. I don't know what's happening, but we're gonna do this as a voiceover. I can totally see this as a voiceover. So basically in the first page, I know it's Katie talking. Um, but it's supposed to be like a secret that it's Katie talking, I guess you would say. So I'm just gonna put Katie, and we're just gonna go with it. Katie V-O, there we go, voiceover. Okay, I can't believe I'm just transcribing this. This is so, what am I doing with my life? That almost killed me. Uh, director? Ha ha ha! a black screen. <laughs> okay, so here's the file that almost killed me, director. And then I kind of want something to happen. I don't know what I want to happen. This is the problem that I'm having. I'm gonna get like writer's block while I'm filming and it's not gonna turn out well. Okay, a planet. Okay, sits. We're just gonna say in space. A planet sits in space. What else is a planet doing? This is already so bad. But you have to include this first page. Otherwise, it's like, it's not, like, you don't know what's happening. It's so much better this way. I mean, you could completely omit this, but by the end, it's gonna be like some plot twist that, oh my God, it's all just a dossier. It's all just, you know, they're all just showing everybody. It's, it's just like, 
I, I want to do this. I want to do it this way, so I'm going to do it this way. With a few spaceships around it. No, not spaceships. They're science vessels. Right? Science vessel Hypatia. close-up of one of the vessels what did Ezra call it she he like described it as a girl like she's all a girl and then the Alexander was a boy <laughs> right isn't that a moment in Illuminate where he says that sleek edges uh, what are we gonna call it gunmetal no all silver and smooth and the quiet of the atmosphere against the blackness of There's my description. <laughs> okay, so Carenza is like an ice planet. So I'm going to say that it's like a blue gray, I guess you would say, right? So, um, is a shade of blue so dull that it nearly looks gray. We're just gonna do that. Okay, this is one of my favorite parts. Some written materials were, nope, not context. Some written materials were not context, were uh, censored by the UTA and had to be reconstructed. If you're wondering what I'm doing looking down at my lap, I'm reading the book, it's in my lap. <laughs> I just realized this looks weird. It had to be reconstructed by our context. Uh, the profanity remains censored as part as per, sorry, per your instruction, period. Sure, one of my favorite lines. The story kicks off with the deaths of thousands of people, but God forbid there be cussing, right? Oh, cussing in it, sorry. I think the word is superimpose, is that what it is? Superimpose is when you put like a caption on the bottom of the thing, is that the word? I don't know, we're gonna go with it. The Illumine group. This is definitely not how you'd write this, but like I said, I took one semester of script writing class, so this is what it's looking like. The next section is all Katie and Ezra's interviews. So, I don't know, do we wanna bounce back and forth between the interview and like what's actually happening? or do we wanna just focus on what happens? Because I like, I feel like if you don't bounce back and forth between the interview and the scene of, you know, what's happening, like them escaping, then you're losing all of that really great, like characterizing dialogue that they give during the interviews. So I think I wanna bounce back and forth. So our scene is going to be um, interior, because we're inside. And we're gonna say that we are in a, um, what's it called? It's not an interview room. It's a, not a briefing room, um, a holding cell, maybe. I don't know, we're just gonna call, call it an interview room. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. Um, and we're gonna say it's day. We're gonna say it's day. On two sides of a desk, or of a table, are an interviewer, gotta capitalize because we're introducing a character, and Katie Grant. And we're gonna say, isn't she 17 or is she 18? I can't remember. We're gonna say she's 17. Fading pink hair. 
because that's all we really need to know about her. She's just got pink hair. Sits back in her chair. We'll make it a different paragraph. Katie sits back in her chair, arms crossed. Tell me about yesterday. Now I'm not gonna repeat this like word for word from the book, but I'm going to definitely like pull from the book, obviously. I might skip some. Some of what she's describing is what's going to happen. It's what we're going to be bouncing to. So instead of just saying all of it, I'm gonna say, um, I was in class when it started. Okay, and now we're gonna bounce to a scene. Um, it's gonna be interior, uh, classroom, day. Yeah, we'll say yesterday. We'll just do it like that. So what did she say? I was in class when it started. This is going to sound stupid, but I broke up with my boyfriend that morning and he was right there on the other side of the room. I'm staring out the window and coming up with all the things I should say to the jerk when these ships fly right overhead and all the windows start shaking. I really like all of this conversation on the next page, so I think what I'm gonna do is describe Katie's uh, sitting in her, at her desk, we'll say. I know it's supposed to be in the future, but they're on an illegal mining settlement, so I am only gonna be able to describe what's happening in my head right now, so that's what I'm gonna say. So Katie's sitting at her desk. That's what you do in a classroom, right? And we're gonna say that they have, like, tablets, I would say, because, I mean, they have they use tablets a lot in the book, but when she's like hacking things So I'm gonna say because they're like this futuristic, you know, we're set in the future that they're gonna have these tablets We're gonna say poking at her tablet with her finger. That's not how you spell finger finger um, She Takes a look out the window and spots capital Ezra Mason uh, Ezra Mason, but he's also 17 because I can't remember how old he is. Um, 17. I'm just gonna say 17 tall for the face that uh, makes him seem younger than he looks. We'll just say that. That's a good way to describe it, right? Katie's eyes narrow. Suddenly, the windows start shaking, like she says, as ships fly overhead. What's that interview like? Did you know something like that? Katie. No. Don't. Just jump. I can't type. Straight to an invasion. Duh. Um, the Carenza settlement wasn't, wasn't exactly legal. But we still got traffic. Now we're gonna go back to um, the classroom. It's gonna be continuous. You hear sirens start. Sirens um, start screaming from outside. All these students in the, in the classroom look up and out the window because that's something that would naturally happen. We'll just have some students say like, oh, um, are they running another test? I don't know, just to show that like, it's it's actually like a warning signal and not just, you know, a normal everyday thing. I'll just say the windows shatter. Haha, <laughs> action scene, shatter. Um, the glass blows into the room as the sound of sirens and, uh, uh, ship engines grows louder. The sound of, uh, we'll capitalize, sirens and engines grow louder. The students scream and 
run. <laughs> I love writing action. You just like emphasize all the things you want to emphasize. The students scream and run. For cover. Oh no, Katie breaks open a window. <laughs> the windows can't shatter. Okay, the windows don't shatter. Um, there's a loud explosion on the other side of the school. The interview room is going to be continuous. I'm going to talk back to the interviewer. Uh, we evacuated at that stage. You evacuated at that stage? Katie, you make it sound way more organized than it was. I don't know. No, I spelled that wrong. Organized than it was. Why would you ask that? That's, I never understood that. Why would you ask, how was it? How was the evacuation of your planet as they were exploding everything and blowing things up? How was it? Just tell me, Katie, how was it? Oh, all kittens and rainbows. Screaming and explosions. How did you make it out? Katie, you Shatters. Now the glass shatters as Katie um, hurls a. I don't even know. What is she hurling? A chair? A chair? We'll say a chair. I'll hurl a chair or a chair at a window. Um, at the window. Throws her jacket over the smashed glass and climbs out. That works for me. Okay, he sprints uh, to her car. Uh, rifles through her bag to find her keys. Then we're gonna do a voiceover for Katie here. Um, because this scene is going to play as she's talking to the interviewer in the background. That's what I figured out. Okay. So we're gonna play, I had this moment when I thought That's the end of that section there. I think I'm gonna stop it here because this video is probably way longer than I meant for it to be. But I'm having a really, like a lot of fun with this. I think I'm getting a little bit nervous and not being able to think of a lot of things because I'm doing this on camera. Uh, so hopefully I'll get over that as I continue to do this. Um, if you think about it, you guys, we have four pages, well, three and a half pages of script already written and we're only on page five of the book, so. I can imagine this happening in my head. I can imagine this 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 movie and it just like it makes me want to know why some films don't go directly off of the book like the way that i'm doing it right now i'm literally taking the dialogue from the book putting it 
on the script. And I understand because this is such a big, big book that moments you're gonna have to skip and moments you are not gonna be able to translate the film and moments, you know, but what I don't get is why do they have to make things up for the movie to move along? Why in that, you know, um, article that I read, did they have to change Bytech to an alien invasion? Oh, I didn't even do the title. Okay, before I go, let's edit the title real fast. So we're gonna call, this is Illumine. Oh, gotta be capitalized. Illumine. Uh, it was obviously written by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, if I can spell her name right. Now we're gonna say, <laughs> adapted by Ashley Knuckles. <laughs> and we don't need my address or my phone number on there. <laughs> Next time I see you guys, we'll, we will be working on Ezra's portion of this interview. I totally forget how long this, I'm pretty sure this scene goes on like forever. But a lot of this is them explaining their relationship. So a lot of that doesn't have to be on screen. It can be shown, you know, in their conversation with each other. Uh, let me know if you guys are enjoying this. If you'd like to see more, I'm going to put up more anyways, no matter whether you guys like it or not. So yeah, and remember, I'm not doing anything with this. This is all just for fun. I give total props and credit to Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman for writing it because I'm taking it word for word. This is not plagiarism. This is me having a good time and, and not wanting to go out with friends tonight instead I'm procrastinating by writing a script to a book that already exists. Anyways, that is going to be it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you later. Goodbye!